It's that time of year again. Chinese netizens have taken to social media to showcase Chinese New Year gift boxes they received from various companies. Some companies are falling short on their offerings, presenting what appears to be a large box filled with couplets, red envelopes, and blessings, but lacking any other practical items. BYD Automobiles, supposedly a global bestseller, is distributing a bunch of masks. Alibaba, as one of China's tech giants, is trending online for its stingy New Year gift boxes. Let's take a closer look at the New Year gifts from these major companies. Could these lackluster gift boxes be a barometer for China's current economy? One man eagerly unwrapped Alibaba's New Year gift box, getting more disappointed as he delved deeper. The box was big and heavy, yet contained few useful contents. First, an Alibaba family letter. Next, what? A small flower pot, apparently for sprouting seeds. Then, a set of couplets followed by a bag of empty red envelopes. Paper with seeds in it. Not sure what that's for. An Alibaba advertisement in English and Chinese. Goodness, this year's gift box is this underwhelming. Somewhat better than nothing. That's it. The man unboxed the Alibaba International Digital Business Division's gift box. The outer packaging resembles a shipping container, fitting for overseas business. Upon opening, the first thing seen is a bilingual Alibaba family letter, along with a bilingual newspaper mainly discussing future strategic directions and achievements over the past year. The flower pot and seed paper mentioned in the video are likely part of a spring seed kit, symbolizing sprouting in spring and hope for a bright future. The remaining items are stickers of landmarks from various countries, representing the places Alibaba International Business had reached. There are couplets ready to be hung directly on the door. Despite the exquisite packaging, it's not very practical. Many people associated with Alibaba International complain that this year's New Year gift box is not worth giving at all. A worker at Alibaba remarked, Alibaba's New Year gift has made my mom worry about the company's financial situation. What's the point of these pieces of paper? My mom said, the box is quite heavy, but there's not much inside. The gesture is nice, but please don't send it next time. Since Alibaba's 1 plus 6 plus N restructuring, each business unit operates as an independent business, responsible for its own profits and losses. Therefore, the New York gift boxes from different business units vary. Let's take a look at the gift boxes from other departments. Alibaba Entertainment seems like a department on the brink of closure. In a large box, there are only shopping bags, an Alibaba family letter, red envelopes, couplets, and a book on Alibaba's history. Is the box necessary? Can it be gifted? Ant Group is said to be Alibaba's most profitable department, yet the gift box gives a sense of decline. Take a look at this unboxing. A dragon-shaped figurine, blessings, couplets, red envelopes, a desk calendar, and that's it. There are a few decorative flowers. Truly unacceptable. What am I supposed to do with these flowers? Can't they be more sincere? Isn't Ant Group supposed to be a lending company? Why does it now feel like a company in debt? How can they be so stingy? Many Alibaba employees are generally dissatisfied with this year's New Year gift box, with some even saying that gift cards and food would have been more practical for the Lunar New Year. Alibaba gave several books. Are they trying to palm off unsold items on their employees? Can we request cash instead? Let's take a look at car company BYD, which is continuously expanding its overseas market. This year, BYD's New Year gift package has been criticized just like Alibaba's. Wasn't the company smoothly entering international markets with unrivaled domestic sales? So why such a lackluster New Year gift package? One netizen claimed to be a BYD employee, feeling too embarrassed to even film the New Year gift boxing, realizing the irony of mocking other companies' stinginess. BYD has released its New Year's big gift package. Exciting moment, right? Let's open it up. Oh my, quite a lot here. A total of seven pieces, estimated to be worth about 100 yuan in total. Sincere thanks, BYD. Now let's see what's inside. A box of Chinese toothpaste, a towel, a brand tag, a nail clipper, a family letter, a keychain, and a pack of tissues. Wait, why are they giving me tissues? Is it because they expect me to break into a sweat out of frustration while unboxing? Not harmful, but insulting. Furthermore, BYD employees complained, saying 100 yuan? It's worth at most 20 yuan. BYD has the most stingy New Year gift. Geely Auto is a bit more generous than BYD, with two pairs of socks and a bunch of snacks. 
In another video, the blogger showcases gift boxes from three electric car companies, IM Motors, Lotus, and Lincoln Co. IM Motors is an electric vehicle brand developed through cooperation between SAIC Group, Zhangjiang High Tech, and Alibaba Group. Lotus, also known as Lotus Cars, is a British manufacturer of sports and racing cars. Lincoln Co. is a new brand created through collaboration between Geely Group and Volvo Cars, launched in Berlin, Germany on October 20, 2016, as a sub-brand of Geely Group. A blogger owns an IM electric car. Let's see what IM gave. This is a... a badge, four red envelopes, blessings, couplets, and what's this? They even gave a splatoon, or a jar. You might argue it's useful, but I have no idea what it's for. Lincoln Co.'s New Year gift box is for spring test drives. Let's unpack it. A creative keyboard parking tag that you could put your phone number on inside the car. There are also red envelopes, a desk calendar, a notebook, and a pair of couplets. Lotus's New Year gift box looks quite luxurious. Opening it reveals two sets of mahjong, a pack of red envelopes, four metal dice, very classy, a deck of cards, and a dragon figurine. Comparing these, it's clear that luxury brands indeed provide quite high-end items. Netizens have shared their Tesla New Year gift unboxing videos, and it must be said, they're quite disheartening to watch. Tesla prepared a special Lunar New Year home appliance gift box for all employees and interns. Each employee receives a voucher, redeemable for food, home appliances, and tools. Items include a food basket, a thermos, and an air fryer. Tesla, Tesla employees also unboxed their 2024 Lunar New Year gift boxes. One employee received a Joyang air fryer, with a total of five gift options to choose from based on personal preference. Along with the air fryer, they also received a pack of red envelopes and couplets. This air fryer is quite heavy. Kia Motors from South Korea gave each employee 1,500 yuan plus an additional 400 yuan for union members, along with six movie tickets, a box of apples, and an exclusive employee care package. Kia's top management get credit where credit's due. Although Kia's car sales in China have been disappointing, their generosity toward employees this new year has been remarkable. In recent years, foreign car companies have gradually reduced their investments in mainland China. One wonders how long Kia can hold on. It would be sad for employees if such a conscientious company were to leave. Shanghai Volkswagen also made a bold move, gifting its employees a 24-karat gold pendant in collaboration with Chao Tai Fook. Let's also take a look at the employee gift box from Foxconn. It's a snack gift package weighing a total of 1.6 kilograms. It includes various snacks such as cream-filled rolls, seaweed snacks, buckwheat biscuits, red dates, canned goods, and several other things. After watching so many unboxing videos, do you feel that the New Year gifts from these big companies and car manufacturers seem somewhat meager? People are talking about how the televised Chinese New Year's Gala had so many commercials and that companies are giving out fewer red envelopes. It's a sign of the shrinking economy. An article on the WeChat public account, Basic Knowledge, stated, Can't you feel it too? On TV, traditional comedy skits are becoming awkward, but product placements are everywhere. Digital red envelopes in group chats are less than previous years. The red envelopes from bosses have become smaller. On New Year's Eve, you can actually count how many red envelopes you received. The article points out that these two phenomena are actually due to the same reason. Take Chinese state broadcaster CCTV, for example. This year, there's no exclusive sponsor for the Chinese New Year Gala, so advertising revenue had to be sought from various sources. They even did away with exclusive products categories. Several liquor brands advertised. It seems that CCTV is in a weak position in this round of advertising negotiations. Not only do the hosts have to do live ad reads, but actors in the programs also had to do product placements. Props and scenery are also heavily sponsored. There was virtually no scene without an integrated ad. Even in magic performances where audience attention is crucial, extras hold sponsor signs and mouth slogans, stealing the spotlight. Audience enjoyment was completely overlooked. The New Year Gala's formula remains the same, but the sponsors are no longer the high-flying ones they used to be.
In the personal experience of the author of the WeChat article, in previous years, friends and colleagues would compete to send red envelopes. Every word prompted a red envelope, everyone snatching and sending, trying to coax the group admin into sending more. By midnight, the red envelopes were so numerous you couldn't even keep up. Money wasn't the point. The sums were small, but it was great fun. But this year, it's much less lively. In the busier chat groups, the group admin sent a few red envelopes, but very few group members participated. In some work groups, bosses would usually give red envelopes to thank everyone for their hard work, each envelope containing a few hundred yuan. Although it's not explicitly stated among peers, there was always an implicit competition to top each other's gifts. This year, everyone tacitly changed to sending New Year's greetings instead. In the company group, he sent everyone 88.88 yuan, a lucky number. The company's performance this year wasn't particularly good or bad, and the year-end bonus stayed the same as last year. I can also understand companies that didn't send red envelopes or send smaller amounts. This year, timely and full payment of wages is the mark of a responsible employer, so there's a mutual understanding. To avoid internet censorship by the CCP, he said he won't explicitly state the reasons behind the above two phenomena. But we all know, when the economy is down, both business owners and ordinary people have less money. For businesses, just surviving the year is considered a success. How could there be money left to advertise on CCTV? Even if business owners don't run off with the money, just giving out red envelopes is already a sign of a conscientious employer. Where could they find the money to give out red envelopes? Actually, giving out lackluster New Year gifts was not the intention of these big companies. If they had the money, who wouldn't want a happy holiday for everyone? But the current situation suggests that the outlook for these big companies is indeed bleak. Let's look at Tencent. According to a report by AFP on February 4th, Tencent disclosed that it had dismissed more than 120 employees last year for corruption and bribery issues. However, some employees questioned whether the company already had a target for layoffs, suggesting that Tencent was simply using legal excuses to downsize. Jiamian News reported that Chinese internet giant NetEase began layoffs in multiple businesses from December 2023, with NetEase Media being particularly hit hard, along with its gaming department. The report stated that NetEase Media mainly initiated large-scale layoffs in January 2024, involving multiple product lines such as NetEase News, NetEase Culture, and NetEase Open Classes, covering positions in content, marketing, sales, and product departments. The proportion of layoffs varied across different businesses and departments, ranging from 10% to 50%, according to insiders. Several informed sources revealed that NetEase Media provided standard severance pay plus one month, Dismissed employees would still receive year-end bonuses and 13-month salary. Some employees could even voluntarily resign and receive corresponding compensation. On November 27, 2023, it was reported that NVS Games, a game business under the ByteDance umbrella, would downsize some projects, begin layoffs, and more. In response, NVS Games stated that there would be adjustments to business direction and organization, focusing more on exploring innovative games and related technologies. Employees in research and development positions within ByteDance's game studio stated to the media that this business adjustment would involve laying off 500 to 1,000 people to be carried out in the first quarter of 2024. Furthermore, according to a report by Chai Xin, Chinese electric vehicle startup NIO laid off 10% of its employees in November 2023. According to Chinese news outlet Security Times, as of the end of 2022, NIO had nearly 26,800 employees. This means that NIO's layoffs could affect nearly 2,700 people. The report pointed out that according to NIO's financial report, in the second quarter of 2023, NIO's revenue was 8.8 .8 billion yuan, with a gross profit of 87 million yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of 93.5% and a net loss of over 6 billion yuan. Senior commentator Zheng Gu Xiang told Radio Free Asia that China's prior economic potential lay in allowing economic decentralization, allowing private enterprises to drive growth in the economy. But as a result, citizens hope to have more power, causing the Chinese Communist Party to feel a sense of crisis. From the government's continued suppression of private enterprises to deleting the editorials on Chai Xin, it shows that political stability is more important to them than anything else. Zheng Xu Guang believes that the fundamental problem of China's economic plight lies in the political system. No one dares to touch it. To decentralize and profit, localities need incentives, and the market needs to become active. Xi Jinping understands this. 
but for him, loosening control leads to chaos, and tightening control leads to death. Xi Jinping is aware that what poses a threat to his regime is not reversing course, but this economic momentum. He is facing challenges from figures within the party. For the security of his regime, he can completely sacrifice everything, including economic growth. Everyone hoped for a post-pandemic recovery in 2024, but the year has just begun and red envelopes are hard to come by. New Year gift boxes are shrinking, and those who are unemployed are still unemployed. Will this year really be better? Regarding the outlook for 2024, Simon Le Plat, a correspondent for French newspaper Le Monde in Shanghai, wrote in his column, The only consolation for the Chinese economy is, 2024 is the year of the dragon. After the dark year of 2023, Beijing can only hope that the year of the dragon, symbolizing wisdom and luck, will ignite some enthusiasm in the rapidly declining market. Le Plat pointed out that China's middle class is in trouble. Wages are stagnant, real estate prices are falling, and since the beginning of this year, the stock market has been in a straight decline. Since 2021, the market value of China's stock market has shrunk by about $6 trillion, hitting a five-year low on the eve of the Chinese New Year. Anxiously, on February 16th, General Secretary Xi Jinping summoned the chairman of the China Securities Regulatory Commission. The next day, the chairman was dismissed. In the following days, due to government intervention, large financial institutions and state-owned enterprises mobilized to buy stocks. Finally, China's stock market rose by 6%. The last time China's stock market crashed was in 2015 as a result of a speculative bubble. But this time, the collapse of China's stock market seems to be a manifestation of widespread lack of confidence. People not only lack confidence in economic performance, but also in whether the authorities have the ability or willingness to get the economy back on track. True economic recovery has not occurred after the end of zero-COVID policies since the second half of 2023. This time, authorities' response measures are different from previous crises. This time, Beijing did not launch a large-scale economic revitalization plan. Le Plat stated that there are many reasons for China's economic malaise. For example, the impact of the zero-COVID policy, weak global demand, and tense relations with the United States. However, the most important reason is that since 2022, the real estate crisis has undermined the confidence of Chinese households. About 70% of Chinese household savings are invested in real estate. In the second half of 2023, the decline in house prices even affected first-tier cities in China. Since 2000, the prosperity of the real estate industry turned many urban Chinese into millionaires without doing anything. Such wealth has enabled Chinese to sponsor their children to study abroad, go on vacations, or buy luxury goods. As the real estate industry faces a crisis, Chinese people are losing their wealth, again, without doing anything. Real estate is also used to provide funds for local governments by selling land to developers. It is also used to provide guarantees for corporate loans, but now it is difficult for entrepreneurs to raise funds for their projects. Over 4,000 local banks are tied to real estate companies, and they are on the verge of collapse. Experts believe that real estate prices will not rebound in the next year. Furthermore, the population decline that began in 2022 will not help real estate rebound. The only consolation is that 2024 is the year of the dragon. The dragon is the most popular animal in the Chinese zodiac, and every 12 years, the year of the dragon brings a slight increase in birth rates and a boost in consumption. But will this year continue this auspicious tradition? Or perhaps it's just wishful thinking? Mm -hmm.